It's incredibly fitting for you where it's at now. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kyle. And I'm Kyle. Welcome to Coffee with Kyle. Cheers. Uh, on today's episode, we have the great Tofe Evans all the way in from Australia. Thanks for having me, lads. Absolutely. Happy to have you here. So, first question is, how do you like your coffee? Oh, it's it's good. Like I, I'm usually a black like black coffee with with honey. Yeah. But they have moon milk, so I'm my guts aren't really liking it right now. But it tastes amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say that. Yeah, and we are here at Summer Moon here in Austin, Texas. Yeah. Summer Moon Coffee Shop. Uh, we'll tag it right here below here as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Hashtag um, Moon Milk. Awesome vibe here. Awesome place. Awesome people. We yeah. actually. Uh, Tofe just gave away gave away uh, copies of the books. Uh, here's my copy. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much, Tofe. You're welcome. Appreciate it. So, so uh, Tofe uh, just launched a book. Everyone has a plan uh, until shit hits the fan. So this book is uh, out now and available. And we will be uh, doing some giveaways uh, later on this show here. But let's dive right into it. Um, one question for you, Tofe. What are you most obsessed with in two words? Two words, go. Practical resilience. That's what I'm so obsessed with. Practical resilience. Yeah, and what does that exactly mean and how did that happen? For sure, but can I say something real quick? Yeah, every time I hear someone say the book title, I crack up because it's just the title is so <laughs> fitting for everything, right? Yep. Like, we came in here to do the thing, like to do the interview and there were no tables here. So it's like, ah, <laughs> oh, that went out of whack then. And then we managed to make it happen, so you just have to adapt. We're good at it, yeah. Um, for me, how did it happen? I was at a point where I was so low in my life where I didn't want to be that ever again. Kind of like, this is based on, I would made sure I'd never hit that point in my life ever again. I did it for myself to the point where, you know what, I, I want to serve other people now because it's, it's a much more fulfilling and it's very purposeful when you can help other people. It's just innate in humans to to give back and the feeling of gratitude because you can't put a price on it. It's literally like invaluable and you don't know whose life you can save with this stuff. So this stuff I'm incredibly obsessed with I have no like yes I'm traveling right now but like I never know what day it is and that's I think that's you're in the right field purposely because that my Fridays feel like Mondays I know that sounds very <laughs> counterintuitive but I think it's tied in with something that's very intrinsically motivated myself because it's not it's, it's not I'm not driven by money or anything like that the money comes naturally but like something that I just want to help people being mentally stronger that is my mission and like make people mentally stronger it's something that a seven year old can understand so nice. I was at a point where it hits through adversity. Now I want to, I've, I've fixed myself. Now I want to help other people that are going through it because it's one of the biggest issues in the world right now. So, uh, so you, tomorrow is a big day for you, right? You have a uh, keynote presentation here, South by? I do. Yeah. So you nervous? Always. Like always, you know yeah. what? Like it doesn't matter if I'm speaking to a bunch of kids. The nerves are always going to be naturally. But once yep. I start, it could, I could be speaking to thirty people, or I could be speaking to thirty thousand people too, man. Um, so. It's kind of cool because this is my first international talk tomorrow. Like, what, what a way to kick off my like, international speaking debut, right? Yeah, <laughs> right. what a way to kick it right here, South yeah. by in Austin. Um, Austin. And the other thing too, like, Texas is some a place that means a lot to me. Yeah. It's like a, a second home to me because I've, I've been here many, many times. So awesome. to be here at a, s a separate juncture in my life to come back to overcome everything, but to be here, it's it's and to be with you lads, it's it's, yeah. it's, it's so awesome. So. I think, and it's going to be my biggest keynote to date because of the audience I'm speaking to, but at the end of the day, it's like, who can I impact on stage? I take myself out of the equation. That always right. gets rid of nerves by right. going, sometimes we're going through egocentric paradigms. Yeah. I'm not going to be able to remember everything. You're making it about everyone in the audience. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's it. That's it. And yeah. you're like, you know what? Yeah. I may miss things, but all I have right. to do is just focus on giving because they don't know the exact, I know the structure of how I do my, my keynotes, but they don't. All I have to do is deliver something really awesome that over deliver so they get some ma massive value that people don't feel alone and people aren't feeling worthless and that they can do these things and you know what, we're all in this together. So yeah. Right, yeah. right. So in your um, in your journey and discovering uh, you know practical resilience in yep. this book, you know, what was what was that moment like the aha moment, the light bulb went off and you're like, ah, I got something here. Yeah, and this like, is maybe what I meant to do, man. Maybe not the book, maybe just like your whole life mission here at Practical Resilience. Yeah. yeah, dude, I actually remembered it quite well. So I found my speaker coach and I remember when she was saying, she said to me, So what is the gift you want to give when you speak, right? Right. I said, practical resilience. She goes, oh, I like that. I said, I do too. I just came out of that then. Right. And so like I've literally coined the concept, so which is kind of cool, I guess. But when we were mapping out my keynote ages ago, 
we gave we had the like the pillars, the main pillars. Then I literally, what did I do? I like I did an extreme brain dump and listed everything underneath those. Yeah. And pretty much that, I looked at it and my speaker coach, are you okay? And I said, this is the keys. And she goes, yeah, I know, but no, no, this is literally the keys on like not for how I did it, but how to actually do it because. I'm so obsessed with like psychology and how people tick and like mental health in general that I like you can see a correlation. You can see something dynamic happening in there. So from there, I thought, you know what? I've got to make this visual by putting it into a a diagram. So anyone that's that responds better to diagrams, they can see it. And so it's easier for me to prove the, the Venn diagram framework. And then right. I thought, you know what? I'm the only like. In a field full of resilient speakers, which is technically anyone that's overcome anything, whether you're in sport, whether you started a rags to riches story, whether you just launched a massive business. Right. Yeah. Um, I thought, how do I, how do I be a purple cow in a field full of black and white cows of Colors resilient cows. speakers? Seth Godin. Seth Godin is the man, yep. and I, I, I'm like, I don't work for him, but I probably plugged this book a million times right now. <laughs> but I thought, you know what? I'm here for practical resilience, and for me to like specialize in that term I think that really helps for standing out right right um, and that's something you got to do in business you got to do with personal branding like it's it help, it's, a, it's like the biggest differentiator how do you stand out from the rest so sometimes or it's like saying what's your USB so my, my purple cow my USB is like I teach practical resilience and I've worked on this stuff with like some top psychologists like neuroscientists behavioral scientists like all these amazing people not wow. to, for the ego of it to like validate why this stuff works, right? Yeah. That's what it comes down. People want validation, yeah. and uh, in a way to show that you know what, I, I actually just want people to not freak out, and yeah. So that's the yeah the book title so fitting. Yeah. So so you mentioned um, like for instance, let, let me let me put this to real life practicality. Like I love everything you just said about your story and about how the practical resilience came to be. But our very own Mr. Kyle with him right now. Um, First of all, we came to we came to Austin uh, about three o'clock in the morning is when we started getting here. Yeah. Daylight savings time took an hour from us, and uh, Kyle right now he may look okay, but he's actually suffering right now very yeah. badly. Yeah. I'm so actually, like, what would be your wor- words of advice to Kyle right now, who he is uh, on the brink of being severely sick right now? Yeah. yeah. Uh, to get through this and have practical resilience through this, right? Yeah, sure. Like, like how, how do you do that in your mind to like just power through the adversity you're going through? Because right? he's 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 in pain right now. Yeah, yeah. A, little bit, a little bit. I need I need some ninja, some brain ninja power. So I'm gonna get it from the man. Yes. The plan. Mental when it hits the fan. Mental toughness. Give Kyle some mental toughness right now. Totally. We have we have a long day today. We really do. We need, totally he needs some mental toughness. Totally. So what do we do? Um, so for me, I've gotten to a point where it, when shit is literally happening in the moment, that you go. You become like, almost like a Zen Buddhist. You, in the moment, you go, just be grateful for this moment. And it's, you know what, like, you may feel sick, bro, but there's a lot of things you can, like, you've got it really good still at the same time. Like, I have, I, like, I, like I, I've, I've traveled a lot of third world countries, developing third world countries in particular, and some of the guys there, they're, like, constantly sick. And, like, that's why I like to do these endurance challenges where I put myself through simulated kind of situations so I'm a little bit more empathetic with them. So for example when I did I did an event last year where I had to run it was like advent running, right? Yeah. I had to run the date. So whatever the date was as how many kilometers I had to run. And like day twenty nine, I'm like, I've only got to do twenty nine kilometers but I have to do twenty eight the day before and twenty seven, twenty six, twenty fuck it was like four hundred and sixty five K, so about a good three hundred cent mile. Wow. In in the space of a month and it was gradual so it's a crescendo of running. Anyway, wow. doing it for like wheelchair bound youth Anyone that's in a wheelchair, really, even if you're an older person that embraces youth, I still look at that as like useful. Yeah. Day 29, your legs are absolutely knackered, but you go, I'm just grateful for having my legs. So even when you're sick, you're just like, you know, at least I have my health there. This is just a minor setback. This makes the struggle worth it because you're gonna look back at these moments and be like, fuck, I remember when I, ch- like, you're gonna look, you're gonna use perspective one day and you're like, this is nothing. I remember when I had to trek down to Dallas with Kyle, we did the interview. <laughs> That was much tougher than what I do now. So, like, oh, yeah. the power of perspective, yeah. you know what? You need adversity because some sort of blessing is going to come out of this, bro, when yeah. you least expect it. And that's what this is, honestly. Is yeah. I want, I'll be honest, 
I I didn't know if I was gonna make it onto the show today. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you, I'm glad you did too. And this is case in point is you see the fruit of pushing past your limitations and putting yourself in a mindset <laughs> where totally in that moment everything's okay. And to be quite honest, guys, you know um, this is definitely we're not about to turn this into the Kyle show by any means because there's two Kyles and a Tove. Uh, and this is about Tove, not about me. But what he's taught me with this lesson today, but also practical resilience as a whole, is that. If you really tap into uh, where you've come from, what you've gone through, to where you've come to, that's your practical resilience right there, is that that overcoming mindset. So, yeah. Yeah, man, and it's uh, like, the book title's fitting for everything. Like, we all have a plan when things go right, no one has a plan when things go wrong. Even, like, even extra strategies can go to shit, right? Yeah. Right. And we had everything all kind of planned out, like all this kind of stuff, and then next thing you know, unforeseen circumstances happen with, with um, the family, right? Yeah. And then next thing you know, like I have to, we have to adapt. Like at the end of the day, man, you could be the richest, the smartest, like you could have all these traits, the quickest, the tallest, whatever the best traits are, you will not even be the most successful, even though they're bonus traits, right? It's like the ones who know how to adapt and bounce back after every fall yeah. are the ones that succeed. And I think having that mindset, it's like, you know what, we don't have, we have a full alphabet, so when plan A doesn't work, we can get to plan Z, but yeah. you know what, sometimes we don't have financial backing to make it to plan F. Right. So this is where you have to get creative and you yeah. have to know how to adapt. Like for example, it was a chance when I had to pull out on the book tour because um, flight sponsor pulled out. So I had to find an investor in one day and I made it happen. So it's kind of like, when I'm in, in the shit, I just always think like there's a gun to my head and be like, that gets your ass in gear. Yeah. So it's... Yeah, it's like you just have to know how to adapt, and when you get pushed back, just get the hell back up as quick as possible. Because yeah. I think that's a little bit more sexy than just staying down there. It takes a little bit of time, depending on how far you got pushed down. It's just moving, just got to get moving, man. Right. So, Tope, what is you know everyone sees the success or the perceived success of somebody or persona online. You know, they see you with your book, they see all the success that you're having as a speaker. But what they don't see is they don't see like um, you know beneath the tip of the iceberg. They don't see the whole story, the hardships that you fought through to get to where you are. Totally. So if you had to sum it up to, you know, you know, what was that, like the toughest moment, your worst moment in professional or personal life that is, you know, stands out for you? Yeah, um, there's a few that come to mind. Like, there's a few that come to mind just recently with the book. Like, yeah. times I'm literally pulling my hair. Literally doing <laughs> this. And I yeah. should have recorded it just in the moment. Like, I don't want anyone to see me right now. Um, like, the most pivotal moment was probably a time I tried to OD, literally. And I'll be open up, like, yeah. there were times where I just lost all my sense of worth. You you start to question your, your validation in life, your validity, going, you know what, 7.6 billion people, I don't think I'm really that worth it. And I somehow started to open up and build my sense back into, and then started to build resilience back in. So there was a pivotal moment when I thought, this is meant to be, but this is not how it's meant to go. It's a very profound dichotomy. This but, is, wait, wait, this is how it's meant to be, but this is not how it's meant to go? Yes. Like, going through these... these well, what, we're we're going to pull that out. We're going to highlight that. This is how it's meant to be, but this is not how it's meant to go. The, the pain I was going through. Yeah. Because right. everyone that's done something... Like, I'm not calling myself a great... Like, anyone that's, like, stood the test of time, their journeys came through a trajectory of pain, right? Yeah. Right. Every one of them, and I've got that a whole section in the book, like, of, and I've given you really good examples. And then I've actually leave a blank spot, the massive bloody arrow, going, write your name and tell us what you'll be, what you'll be known for, and like tell us the actual pain points you're going in your life right now, because it's people don't realize there is a power in negative thinking. I use it all the time. It's like what I was saying before, like, I, like perspective straight up, and I go, I'm pretty sure the year of like absolute misery that I never thought I was going to get out of. That was a lot tougher than this 200 mile I gotta do. That's like yeah. a paradigm shift. Because, right. you know, that sounds a lot. But yeah. the, I'm gonna be done in like 70 hours. That was nine months of like 10 months, however long it felt like for 40 years. <laughs> um, felt forever. But there is a power in negative thinking, and you can use that adversity because there's so much a negative connotation on adversity. But it you need it to, because you start to ponder things when you're in the, the worst state ever. But then you get curious, and then this is when you start you start asking why and why and why and why, and you get to the root cause of it, and you get to you take out all the layers, and you get to the root cause. 
before you know it because it's constantly locked in your reticular activation system, so your lexicon. So you're thinking about, you're naturally going to get gravitated towards the right people because neurons are wired together and neurons are fired together. So that's going back to neuroscience where, you know what, people on LinkedIn are attracted to other people on LinkedIn because that's, we know, that's the social media that we really resonate with. As an ultra runner, I'm naturally going to gravitate towards other ultra runners because you get curious in those fields and you start speaking those same languages, right? Right. If you're in business. Right. What you never know, you will never. What you don't understand, you'll never have. So if you don't understand, like main business fundamentals, how are you meant to talk to a, an investor? Because that's the language they speak in. Right. So for me, even going through adversity, you start pondering, you start getting curious, you start opening up, and it's hard at first, but you naturally gravitate towards the right people because. Your lexicon, that's all that's locked in your subconscious right now. Yeah. So like when you buy a when you buy a brand new car for the first time, you see that car everywhere. When you're a parent for the first time, now I can't assess this because I'm not a parent yet. Um, I'll let you know. You're thinking of children's names. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. You hear the name all the time. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, totally, absolutely. And it's it's just whatever's locked in your in your lexicon at the time. So that's why there's always a blessing in adversity. And for me, I'm glad I went through those really tough moments in my life. Because I literally didn't think I was going to get out. So, yeah. Wow. Okay. Um, I mean, yeah, so. Like, well, thank you. Um, I appreciate and, that. And I know you're not trying to be poetic and beautiful, but it is because, uh, you know, I can see, I can just see, I, I can't even wrap my arms around it, but I can just see the impact that your story and you yeah. are going to have on I appreciate that, whether it's one person or, or it's tons and tons and tons. I think as long as one person hears, hears the truth, yeah. your truth, yeah. through what you've gone through to where you've come from, it's yeah. where you are now. And it's a, it's a continual journey. It never stops. No. Your practical resilience isn't a one day, oh, I've got practical resilience, let's go to work. Like, it doesn't work like that. Just like when you ask it's for dynamic. patience, yeah. you don't just get zapped with all these feelings of, oh, now I've got patience. No, you put in situations where you have to choose to be patient in that situation. So it sounds like practical resilience is just like that, that you have to make the choice in the situation to not let, to maybe let it burn you a bit, but also let you grow from that and learn from 100%. Your... Yeah, it's, everything's like a mad learning curve. And you said something about just impacting one person. That's why I wrote the book. Like, I didn't write it for the bestseller status. I didn't write it to be an author. Like, I'd rather be known as, like, a storyteller, if anything. Uh -huh. Like, it still fathoms me that I'm an author. But, like, I wrote it to prevent someone from a crisis or prevent someone from committing suicide or help someone grow to new uh, unimaginable heights. And just focusing on one person. Like, when I do my keynotes, just focus, like, I tell myself, Tove, just focus on one person. I know it sounds weird to talk to the person. But, like, <laughs> um, that's what it's come down to because that one person is going to help spread the word to the next and the next and the next. And, like... Just saving one life is, that's all it's about, right? Like, yeah. impacting one person, yeah. I think having that mindset. Because um, you can get anyone, but you can't get everyone. Yeah. So, or it's like, you can do anything, you can't do everything. You can use the same, that same applies. But that's all it is. You just got to get one. And, because we all think so differently. So, in the field, you can't, I don't know, even feel like someone as, someone has sought out like Gary Vaynerchuk. I was meant to see him yesterday, but he pulled yeah. out last minute. Barson. Um... He won't get everyone in the crowd. He'll get a lot of people in the crowd because he's bloody awesome. I love, I love his stuff. Yeah. But like, I know a guy that doesn't like his stuff, and I saw it. He was next to me when we saw him live like last year. So it's like, and I don't think Gary would really care. He just wants. He knows that it's only going to hit a certain amount of people, and I think yeah. that's all it comes down to. Me. And yeah. So, so, and I'll make this quick. What's funny is, so I have a theory about. So there's the. I feel like all of our sayings are stereotypes might be rooted in some form of truth and so there's this parable about you know it, you have to lead a horse to the water but you can't make a drink or you can lead somebody to the door but you can't make them walk through it totally. so here's what I believe is yeah. I believe it's not just about the horse and the horse's story I believe it's about the master and the horse so there's two people involved in that horse going to the water yeah. it is the master's responsibility to try to lead that horse to the water it is your responsibility to tell your story and what you've gone through but it has to be the horse's uh, you know it's the horse's job and responsibility to be receptive and be thirsty and be ready to drink it 
That's your responsibility to lead them to the water and talk about practical resilience to your audience. Yeah. It's the audience, the horse, or as Billy Madison would say, society. <laughs> uh, it is their responsibility I like that. and their choice to accept it, receive it, and drink that water that you're giving them. Dude, that's awesome. I love that. So um, the parable now is not just about a horse. It's about the master and the horse, and each of them have their inherent responsibilities with one another. So, yeah, that's what I feel practical resilience is. I love that, man. And it's like, essentially, I'm just the guiding light for others. People yeah. have to flick that switch off in their brain, yeah. but it's not until you reach like a pivotal moment in your life. Pivotal moment. Yeah. That, for me, I am really empathetical to those who have hit rock bottom, and like, I have some really close friends who have never hit rock bottom before. So it's a bit hard to be vulnerable around them because they may judge. Now that's yeah. totally fine and I have the emotional intelligence to move past through those. Some people don't, so that's why they don't want to open up because they're afraid of people judging them. So it's having that trusted inner circle, but that's why I love doing ultra marathons because you, you go through mental blocks, you suck at the time, but you're glad you go through them. But you see someone else going through a mental block in a race and you're like, hey dude, do you need water, do you need food? Do you need company? What do you need? Because I was just literally just there. And when you come out of the race, like when you finish the race, the ones, the races are, I love the most, are the ones we have to dig the deepest because you, oh uh, yes, yeah. Because it's like going through life's adversity. You, when you go through life's adversity and you get out, you go, I can't believe I was going through that, but I'm glad I did as much as pain, as painful as Dude, I went through that when I ran a half marathon. Like, jeez. Yeah, okay, so you can yeah, race. I, I relate because when I ran the half marathon, like, around adversity. like mile like eight, I'm like, uh, I'm like dying. Totally. All right, we're gonna give away two copies of Toast's new book, and we need your engagement. We need help from you. So what we want you to do is we want you to tag a friend and explain why you and that friend need this book. Does that work for you guys? In a creative way. Yeah, hundred percent. So tag a mate, and like I did, I did one of these recently, and it was it worked really well. Where one gentleman that won it, he was he explained all the adversity he went through in 2017, and he said at the end, I don't complain. Like. That was kind of cool to see, and like, I don't care if you do complain or if you don't, but like, you just mention it in a real creative way, whether you make a video and repurpose it back to this episode, or you just put a comment, it doesn't really matter. The boys will pick. Yeah. Um, and yeah, like, tell us tell us why you should get this book. Yeah, tell, tell us your story of adversity. If you, if you do make a video, perfect, tag us in here, tag Kyle with them, Tope Evans, Kyle Burt, and hashtag Coffee with Kyle's, hashtag Practical Resilience, and uh, we'll find it. Yeah. So, that concludes. We're gonna end this the way we end every Coffee with Kyle's, and we're gonna let Tope the guest of honor here with coffee. Go ahead. Let's have some coffee. Yeah. Yep. Straight up and grab it. Buddy. Just put yep. it in there.